Let's say I want to measure the distance between these two points on a piece of paper. I'll use a ruler, put it down here and measure the distance, 12 centimeters. That was fairly easy, but when the distances are of geological scale, for example, the distance between my camera and that hill over there, doing this over and over seems a bit uncomfortable and rather f***ing stupid. So how do I do that? How do I measure the distance between my camera and that hill over there? In fact, how did we measure the distances and created these extremely accurate maps as early as 17th and 18th century without using GPS and satellite imagery? I'll answer that soon and we will go deep in history too. But first, let's talk about triangles. If I ask you to replicate this triangle exactly on a piece of paper for whatever reason, it is close to my heart. What is the minimum amount of information about that triangle I need to tell you? The answer is one of these. But we are interested in this one. So what I am saying is, if I tell you two of the angles, let's say this one and this one, and one side, any side, let's take this one, you can recreate this triangle for yourself by some procedure or another. Those procedures can be found in textbooks of class 6th or 7th I presume and if you don't remember them because you are too cool to do so, let me just demonstrate. You just draw a line of given length, extend one line segment at given angle from one end of that line, do the same for another, where they intersect must be the third point of triangle and this is the exact replica of triangle I showed you in the beginning. What we just established here is that if you construct a triangle with two given angles and a given side, that triangle is unique. There can't be any other triangle that satisfies these conditions. I swear this is all related to our distance problem. Talking about distance, now that you have exact replica of my triangle, can you calculate how long is this side? Triangles follow a lot of laws and rules. One of these rules state that the sum of all three interior angles of a triangle must equate to 180 degrees. We know that this angle is 60 and this angle is 30, I mean I told you. So this angle must be equal to 90 degrees. Triangles follow yet another law called the law of sines, which states that the length of any side divided by the sine of angle opposite to it is equal to the same for other two sides and their opposite angles. If you don't know what sine is, it is a button on your calculator right here. So using this second law, this side divided by sine of 90 degrees must be equal to this side divided by sine of 30 degrees. Using the actual values and solving this little equation, our side turns out to be 6 centimeters. What we just did on paper is known as triangulation. And if we apply that little theory to our real life problem, if we construct a triangle, an imaginary one, with one point being my camera here, the other point being that hill and a third arbitrary point, we can calculate the distance of one side of this triangle, which incidentally is the distance we require. To create a triangle, we need a third point. How about that hill over there? If we choose the third point as that hill, our triangle becomes something like this. Now the problem is measuring the angle between that hill and that hill over there. Usually engineers use these devices called theodolites. Of course I don't have one, so what I'm going to do here is a little bit sketchy. Basically I stuck my phone somehow over my camera, opened a compass application and noted the angle while aiming at one of the points in the given triangle. Then I panned the camera aiming towards another point of the triangle, again I noted the angle, then I subtracted one reading from the other and this should be our desired angle. Then I went up to the second point, did the exact same thing again and we get the second angle. Now we do need the length of this side. I can measure that side yet again using triangulation with a different set of points but that will take me about 2 or 3 more hours to animate. So here's Google Earth. That side is 678.18 meters. Now that we have all the data we want, we have two angles and a side, a scaled replica of triangle would look like this. The third angle would be 19.5 degrees, you know some would be 180 degree rule, and length of this side can be calculated using law of sines. x upon sine of 97.3 degrees equal to 678.18 meters divided by sine of 19.5. Using actual values, the result is 2015.19 meters, which is really close to the actual value according to Google Earth. 
The value I calculated is off by about 61 meters, which is not surprising because I ignored a crap ton of things for the sake of simplicity and that way of measuring angles is rather f***ing stupid. But that sort of error is way too big to handle in actual cartography. We are using triangulation for centuries now. Most notable examples would be the Cassini family map of France, principal triangulation of Great Britain, the Anglo-French survey, but the most ambitious trigonometrical survey ever carried out in the world was the Great Trigonometrical Survey of India. India is huge and it was even bigger back then. You could stuff about 15 United Kingdoms in British India. And then the terrain and altitude of India is more diverse than entire Europe. Still, the British were adamant on measuring the lands they recently came to dominate. On 10th of April 1802, the giant undertaking began under William Lambton of East India Company. As you know by now, or at least I hope that you know, that you need one side of a triangle to carry out triangulation. In our little experiment, we basically <coughs> cheated and used Google Earth. When the early 19th century Brits in red coats tried to use Google Earth, their computer ran into unexpected Windows updates. Since Macs were too expensive, the British decided to use a particularly accurate folding chain that was about 100 feet long. The chain was kept in constant shade and constant tension to minimize temperature variances. The first baseline, baseline is the side of triangle whose length is known, was 12.1 kilometers long, taken near Madras or Chennai in South India as we know it today. By 1806, the survey reached other coast. Determining point after point, triangle after triangle, survey carried on decades after decades under William Lambton, then George Everest, then Andrew Waugh and then James Walker. As I said, India is huge. So huge that simply noting angles and applying law of science wasn't sufficient. Calculations were affected by other important problems like curvature of earth, my sincere apologies to flat earthers, refraction of light in atmosphere and irregularities in curvature of earth and gravitational field. To tackle those and take measurements, specialized equipments like giant theodolites, zenith sectors to determine latitude and of course the chain were used. At times, the survey party consisted of 700 people. A team of computers, which at the time meant humans specialized in calculations, were used to figure out positions, latitude, altitude, and applied correction for all of the variances. Soon, and by soon I mean like 3 or 4 decades later, the survey reached Himalayas. And then a side quest popped up. Find the highest peak of the world. The only problem was the kingdoms of Himalayas didn't exactly welcome foreigners. British used native Himalayans called Pandits to carry out survey in such places like Tibet. One notable person would be Pandit Nain Singh Rawat, who surveyed a huge section of Brahmaputra river, a trade route from Ladakh to Tibet and location of Lhasa. Other places like Nepal were even more unwilling to allow foreigners and survey was forced to observe the Himalayan peaks from the Rai region. In late 1840s, a particular Peak B or Peak 15 was noted by Andrew Waugh, the Surveyor General of India back then. As observations indicated, it was probably higher than Kanchanjunga, then considered highest in the world. After about 30 observations from 5 different locations and a lot of calculations carried out in next few years, Peak 15 was indeed higher. In 1852, Radhanath Sikdar, a Bengali computer and mathematician working with Great Trigonometrical Survey was the first person to determine that Peak 15 was the highest at exactly 29,000 feet. Andrew Waugh repeatedly verified the figure till 1856 when the official announcement was made. The final height declared was 29,002 feet to make the measurement look more credible and not rounded off. For that reason, Waugh is often called the first person to put two feet on top of Everest. Oh yeah, Peak 15 was officially named Everest after George Everest's predecessor as Surveyor General to Andrew Waugh due to lack of a common name like Nanda Devi, Dholagiri or Kanchanjunga. The name Everest turned into Everest as the time passed on. It is interesting because Everest might not have even looked at Everest in his entire life. Neither did Radhanath Sikdar who still calculated the height of Everest to 99.9% .9 accuracy just from the observations taken from hundreds of miles away. The Great Trigonometrical Survey ended in 1871, with a gridiron of triangles spanning entire subcontinent, 
figuring out the heights of great Himalayan giants and vast distances across the nation. Triangulation remained the principal way of mapping until advent of newer technologies like GPS, aerial imagery, satellite imagery and lasers. But now this is end of the story. The story of how we mapped and measured the world, or India in particular. Of how we figured out the heights of highest mountains on earth. Just with a lot of triangles. Thank mm-hmm. you.